that you see here, that's on duty right now, they are the Orbit 2 shift. There's three different shifts, Orbit 1, Orbit 2, and Orbit 3. So uh, this is Orbit 2, and in just a little bit you will see, you know, you'll start seeing some, some sitting at two seats here. So they Is that what's going in. on at the and ISS uh, right now? That's inside the ISS. If wow. Y'all so see that guy fly through? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They actually have a live shot. Usually they don't have a, let's see. So they've reversed the crew's sleep. So right now uh, the crew won't go to sleep until another eight hours from now because they're getting ready to send off their three crew members. With Scott Kelly. <laughs> you see, after the quad, the math, they master that, and you can see you can just zip right through. Uh, Scott Kelly's coming home, U.S. astronaut. Mikhail Kornienko is coming home as well, cosmonaut. And another cosmonaut, Sergei Volkov, uh, will, will be returning. Mikhail and Scott, they are just wrapping up this almost one year, 340 days, they lived out in space. So it was the one year crew, so they're coming home in a little while. So what you're hearing over the audio or the, um, that's actually, that's Russian, they speak in Russian right now. So the team that you see on console, uh, the flight director is the man in charge. That is um, Judd Freeland in the light in the white shirt dress shirt he is the flight director in charge right now the flight directors make all the decisions for the mission and no one can override their decisions the decisions for say a situation is happening inside the ISS and a decision has to be made it's going to be the flight director that's going to make that decision and no one can override not even the president of the United States everything those decisions are critical decisions are the flight directors um, sitting at Capcom is an astronaut. He is, uh, uh, that's Reed Wiseman that's sitting on console. So Reed is an astronaut. Reed lived on the ISS last year. It's been about a year, maybe almost a year and a half ago, Reed was living on the ISS. He's a U.S. astronaut. So I know, know the lady that's sitting next to him. She's usually one of the other uh disciplines but maybe she's learning and training to sit at Capcom since she's there today. Um, young man sitting on console with uh, Judd. He used to be uh, the at course Spartan and he must be training, he might be one of the five that's been training to become flight directors. Uh, so um, there are five new that are in training and he might be one of them since he's sitting with them. I'm not sure though. Uh, Topo is trajectory, so they have Topo on the console usually for half a day. But since uh, the vehicle is getting ready to undock a little bit later on today, they have them on, and they'll be on until they undock and I guess come home. So, but they usually work four hours on console. The rest, I guess, is behind the scenes. Now these flight controllers, they work nine-hour days, eight-hour shifts. It's a nine-hour shift overall. Eight hours on, ninth hours are handover hour. So. Soon they might have someone coming in too. I don't see any of them coming in. It's about a quarter to now. Usually you'll start seeing two sitting at the seat unless they've already adjusted their shift uh, for the day. Let's see, the Rio is the remote interface officer. They're the voice to all the mission control centers around the world. Originally there was a U.S. and Russia. Now there's one in Canada, in Montreal. Uh, there's one in at Scuba Sun City for Japan. There's one in over Pfaffenhofen, Germany, right outside Munich for the European Space Agency. And there's a backup command center for this mission control at Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. So there are quite a few mission controls now. So Rio, Rio is the voice to all of them. Now Rio doesn't have to speak any of the languages except English. Um, they usually have a translator if they need to translate, especially with Russian they will have a translator that translates uh, the, the words or even translate the writing as well. Some of the other disciplines in front of Rio is Pluto, the Plus Planning and Utilization Team. Uh, anything that has to be disconnected or connected to the main buses, 
That was just a simplified uh, explanation of what they do. They have a lot of other things, but those details are uh, mainly so that's one of their major back things. On the they salt do. intake. They discovered that salt uh, cutting back on the salt intakes helps uh, eliminate some of the bone loss as well. But they still lose some, but it's I think it's changed a little bit compared to what it was in the past. Um, Ethos is an environmental control and life support systems, or they now they're known as the environment thermal operations support. So they monitor the thermal operations internally, and they are the making sure that the environment, the climate, is proper for the crew at all times. They have to make sure that it's kept at 14.7 in our atmosphere. So. Lifeline for the crew. Spartan is the space station's power articulation thermal analysis. So Spartan, they are part of the power team and they are also the ones who articulate the solar rays. So when the solar rays have to be adjusted, they're the ones who will articulate that. Now ISS is still in daylight, but you look on the screen, it looks dark. And even with the parameter, that's, you see the white oval around the International Space Station, you're passing down over the northern, uh, southern and northern area of South, Central America and over South America now. Um, they are, um, the parameter is that white oval. That's how far out the ISS can see. So it's kind of interesting that they're pulling in in darkness right now. There goes Scott, he's floating through. He's probably really excited because it's just a few hours he's actually getting into the capsule and they're gonna be coming home. The excitement is sad. A bit of both. Yeah. Probably, but I, I think he's uh, he's looking forward to probably smelling fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> but by this point, I think I would be, especially when I know I'm getting ready to come home, you know, I'm so close. <laughs> I got a chance to go to ESOC, European Space Operations Center. Mm -hmm. That's their version of the screen. Yeah, sometimes, you know, that's pretty neat. And sometimes they have them pulled up on the screens. They don't have yeah. it today. But usually they'll have a rushes on the screen or they'll, and they'll move from one to the other. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So you got to visit there. I got to visit ESOC. Awesome. Friend of a friend. Awesome. And so did I. Cool. Yes, and so did I. Awesome. You got some photos of you sitting at the console? No, unfortunately, like this, they don't generally they, like it. Oh, Actually, you're rude. They were doing a simulation that day. Mm -hmm. If they weren't, we probably could have. Probably could have, yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. That, that's getting close. That's, that's neat. Mm -hmm. um, but this team, they are the support. They're the ones who monitor the ISS and control it um, from right mm -hmm. here. ISO is actually the inventory and supply. So you saw where we passed SpaceX and you saw the big soft-sided bags. So thanks to NASA, we have uh, our soft-sided lunch bags and coolers and all of that now because that's how they pack their gear. It's not in hard-sided and boxes and things like that. It's actually in those soft-sided bags and boxes that you saw there. So, um, but Spartan and ISO, ISO is actually the inventory person knows where all of everything is located there a part of the support for ISO and all the flight controllers we jump across over to the door is OSO the operation support so anything that the team needs down here and the crew needs they're the maintenance people say so something breaks down I've been told they're part of the they're the maintenance people as well so um, that's ISO uh, also and ISO does the inventory now uh, Tim Cooper just Blue through. He's a U.S. astronaut. Uh, he's in a green shirt. So the ones that are in blue are coming home, and the ones that are in the green polos are staying on board. So they're going to be the Expedition 46 crew that's going to be staying on board, and the ones in blue, they're getting ready to return home. So see, they even changed their outfits on, and their team. So they're coming home together. Uh, but Tim had uh, is now the commander for the ISS. Scott was the commander and they had a handover ceremony um, yesterday. Uh, and so now Tim is officially in command of the ISS. So Scott doesn't have to worry about that. He's got to worry about making sure he got all his gear and it's in the Soyuz and they're going to return home. So that's looking inside the, that's, I think that's Destiny Laboratory. I can't tell with all that stuff in there. Uh, but other of the disciplines here, ADCO is the Attitude Determination Control Officer. 
ADCO, uh, they fly the ISS, so they are the pilots. And they are, say, orbital debris is coming into the vicinity. They're the ones who are going to do the operations to change the attitude so that it's out of the way of that orbital debris, if possible. Um, if the orbit decays, there's a reboost, they take care of, they handle that as well. So that's the Attitude Determination Control Officer, ADCO. Uh, at the back of the room, I'm going to jump all the way over in the back corner and then I'm going to come across here. Cronus is a, um, the Communications Radio Onboard Network Utilization Systems Team. It's a lot of words. It's a lot of things. It's a lot of disciplines. It's one, just one discipline. They are, are the IT people. Easiest way to describe who they are. Um, say the cameras, internally and externally, um, need to be operated. They can do that. Kerr can do it from in, inside and operate, but Cronus does, usually does that as well. So if flight want to see a different flight configuration or different view outside the ISS, they're the ones who are going to locate those cameras and pull up those views for uh, the flight director. Um, BBL, visiting vehicle officer, if a vehicle is going up or coming down, you have someone working that console. So someone is sitting at BBL today because so users are going to undock uh, this evening. Um, across the aisle from them is the <coughs> FOD, flight operations director. They're the boss, the upper management that would sit here on console sometimes. The BME, the biomedical engineer. BME is um, the biomedical engineer who supports all of the experiments that are ongoing on the ISS, and they support the surgeon, the flight surgeon. So it's short here, for surgeon, but it's actually the flight surgeon. So the flight surgeon is the doctor on duty. So whenever um, flight um, flight uh, flight director or the flight surgeon actually can speak to the crew daily as needed. Uh, the timelines represent the crews, as you can see. Uh, ISS, Mission Elapsed Time, MET. The International Space Station has been a working facility for 17 years and counting. Mm -hmm. 17 years, 102 days and counting. Um, the one-year crew, Mission Elapsed Time, that's the MET for them, 340 days and they're coming home, counting up to when this crew is going to return home this evening. Uh, Expedition 46, MET, that's the whole team was 81 days. They were the Expedition 46 crew. Um, so part of that crew, that's actually the three that's going to be left there is within that 81 days. Uh, they've been up. So six months stay usually. So they've got a while to go uh, with other crews. So when they were delivered. So, But the vehicle they're coming home in has been there for 181 days. Now, so ground control takes care of all of that along with communication. You see on the tracking map, the, um, there's a color shapes. One is blue, one's green, one's yellow. Those are footprints for part of the teachers, the tracking data relay and satellite system. There are satellites that are parked 22,000 miles above the equator. Those three uh, footprints are for three of those satellites. So we don't get to see this much live footage. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> Not on, oh, yeah. on a daily basis. So. <laughs> but they are, uh, so they communicate with the crew through these satellites. And they move in a geosynchronous orbit for that, um, uh, different sectors around the, above the equator. And so the voice goes up 22,000 miles, comes down to a dish of white sands, passes through a land <coughs> here to mission control. So it only takes about a half a second to communicate. So it's not bad for 22,000 miles up there. So ground control, make sure all of that's right. Build the timelines that you see as well. So in four hours from now, the 44S is going to be undocking. <coughs> so this is historic mission control. This is where Apollo 7 was controlled from. This is where three Skylab missions were controlled from, last in 1974. Um, the Apollo Soyuz project, 1975. Uh, the first shuttle, STS-1 Columbia, was controlled from this room. So it was two-man mission, John Young and Robert Cripple. That was April the 12th, 1981. 
So all the rest of these shuttle plaques represent those and there's the rest of them are actually behind the wall here in the hallway beyond this wall here, this little room. Overall, there are 55 shuttle missions flown out of here. So this was a working room for shuttle through 1996. They moved down the hallway to the new facility, continue working out of there through 2011. So that's the last room that we'll show you today. Um, so it is shuttle and it is also the future. So I'm gonna show you future mission control and you'll, you'll, um, we'll talk more about that later. But right now, we are going to go up one floor. We're going to go step back in time, and we're going to go visit Apollo Air Mission Control. Now, that was a shuttle mission control room as well. So this room was decommissioned in 1996. The one we're going up to was decommissioned in 1992. But it's also this area, this facility is where we began controlling manned missions for, from Houston. So back in 1965 with Ed White and James McDivitt's flight, Gemini 4. So when we go up one floor, that's where that was controlled from. But this mission control center that we're in is Houston. So welcome to Houston. Y'all have any questions? Now all of the other mission plaques that you see on the walls around us here, some are overhead where we can't see those and all around here are these expedition missions starting with Expedition 14. This team moved here in 2006. A October of 2006 they moved here, have been working out of this room since then. So they started here with uh, control of Expedition 14. Now they're up to Expedition 46. So been here quite a while. So right now, if we get our pictures, we're gonna go up one floor and we're gonna go step back in time. So there was some time in between this, but you know, back in 1969, uh, NASA administrators and the president, uh, Richard Nixon, had already signed off on a letter and a decision to end the man in the mission. I don't know if it was the number that I was reading. They were going to end the man. And they were um, looking at designing a new vehicle. One of them carried cargo anchors. But the um, decision was made 72, 17, Apollo 17 was the last. But in between that time, uh, there was actually, uh, NASA was working on a new design testing that would, might have been a part of the space era. We might have been seeing what they call lifting bodies fly. But the lifting bodies was a part that nobody talked about really, but it was a NASA plan. It was not a plan of astronauts flying lifting bodies for a while, but they utilized that design. And the team that was working with this, it really knew that they were going to be in this this would be the next phase. It didn't happen. The lifting body designs, the military continued to use it. But NASA went from that to taking that design and creating what we know as a show, the orbiter. They built the Enterprise first, tested it. It flew for nine months in 77. Everything checked out, started building the shuttles that we saw flying. And um, 21 were flown out of here. This room was decommissioned in 1992, but the 21 missions that were flying up here, many of those are tossed into shuttle flights. This is DOD, Department of Defense Mission Control Room. They work from the console at the very back of the room where the red phone is sitting. And actually, I know the black phone, but for dramatic licenses, we, we have a red phone to kind of draw your attention to that console. And after we work that console to control the splashdown rescue of the crew. This is also where the top secret shuttle flights from DOD was operating those missions for control now. Now DOD was, they really liked flying these missions, utilizing shuttles. So they had actually built a facility out of Vandenberg Air Force Base. So Vandenberg Air Force Base is out in California. So their plan was to launch off the west coast as well. So there were going to be shuttle missions launching off the east coast and west coast. but. After we lost the Challenger crew back in 1986, they decided that they would fly the missions into space in a different way. So now they use that facility to for the Delta IV heavies to uh, simulate Greenwich Mean Time. And so this team, they will be, they are a part of the teams that support ISS. And in the near future, 
the International Space Station that we saw a crew working on, a team working over there. They're all going to be working out of here uh, because their room is going to get a new work and they're going to give it an upgrade. And it will be brought into the 21st century or as they described, the new millennium. And this is what it will look like. So welcome to the future. This is uh, known as MCC 21, Mission Control Center of the 21st century. So that includes this room and the room that you, are, you were looking at just a bit across the hallway. So they got an upgrade and a new look, and this is it. That is Koichi, that's sitting on console as well. He just returned from the ISS of um, last year. So it hadn't been too long since he's been living on the ISS for six months as well. Who's this up here? Is that just Dina, a suite office? Dina Contella. That's the flight director's uh, suite. Oh. So usually that's where the increment flight director works out of this, out of the suites. So that's who she is. The one lady that when we were leaving, we she came in the room with one woman. She was a blonde with uh, shoulder length blonde hair. She is a flight controller as well, and she was uh, one of the flight directors as well. Uh, that we saw when we were leaving out of Apollo just a little bit ago. Level up!